SMS will have been around several decades, very, very soon, but voice has been around five times longer. It's almost 150 years old, so in four years' time, so it's 146 years old. Voice still has a huge role. Is the microphone working? No, I haven't got a microphone. <laughs> but it, actually, that, that's a good point. It doesn't matter. I can stand there. I forgot after my lunch. It was, it was taken off me. Because I was wandering around everywhere with my microphone. It was taken off me. But there we go. I didn't need it there. The CO2 reduction. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Bix crew. Yeah. Proximus, Belgacom. There we go. Yeah. Uh, so, voice has been around almost 150 years. It plays such a huge role in the businesses of a good number of you here in this room, particularly those of you that started off like the sponsor of this session and Vox Services, sorry, Vox Solutions, let's get it right, but previously a Vox Carrier in the world of voice wholesale, having now moved into the wider area of messaging. So, it's a very important part of people's business lines. It generates a huge amount of money still, over $200 billion a year. So it's important, but we know there are pressures, commercial, regulatory in many ways, commercial model, the move to uh, A-based charging, origin-based charging, so many different pressures as well. So it is under attack. So therefore, it is very, very fitting that we have a session now to talk about this area. Many people get so excited about talking about RCS, rich business messaging, WhatsApp, Line, Telegram, whatever, they keep forgetting, and SMS, of course, they keep forgetting that voice is the oldest channel out there. And early on today, someone talked about, asked the question, what about the importance of video? Video is huge. And if you think about how old the moving picture, i.e. a film is, ultimately video is, that is so old as well, but that plays a huge role in business messaging as well, ultimately, with a link, for example, bed, embedded in SMS to a product video or something like that. So we're talking here about something that underpins telecoms is absolutely a core constituent part of what we're doing. So I'd like to introduce a number of people to the stage. We've got a couple in the room. We're going to have a couple online. So I'd like to introduce uh, Teodor, who's the Chief of Staff for Vox Solutions. Teodor Magriano. <laughs> Welcome, Teodor. Come on up. And also Julian Bottiglianu, who is Global VP of Strategic Partnerships. So the Vox crew are going to start off with a presentation, and we're going to move to a discussion. So uh, Teodor, take it away. And we've got a couple of people joining us online as well, who are Esan, who is your founder and CEO, and Sam Barker, from Juniper as well. So fingers crossed they're here. Thank you, James. Um, and they are. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you for the facts as well, very enlightening. I will take it on from here. Um, so just to set a bit the context, we want to have a discussion, as James said, while voice has been around for the longest time um, and the market is under pressure, right? There still are a number of segments that operators can use to capitalize on. These actually can bring significant growth. Um, so we want to tackle that today and discuss this with everyone here. Going on a bit into how the structure of, of the discussion will be like. First, um, I'll invite Sam Barker, who is head of analytics and forecasting at Juniper Research, to talk about the voice market evolution, how they see it in terms of context, and also the white paper that they're publishing um, on how that is uh, shifting or causing changes in the industry, but also what are the op opportunities out there for operators to leverage right in, in, at this time. Um, then I'll go on and talk about what can operators basically do to fully leverage voice and, and increase revenues. And then I'll let my colleague Julian to um, discuss on how does our technology fit in or alternative technologies um, into the picture and in today's landscape. Um, so I'll give it to Sam. Thank you, Sam, for joining us. Um, and I'll let you basically discuss and go over the, the studies and the market context in, in voice. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Theodore. Uh, yeah, going, going through the first slide, which is um, uh, essentially where Juniper Research sees uh, the, uh, the voice market um, uh, heading. Essentially, what, what we're all seeing is the, um, 
the voice revenues for operators are, are moving down. Obviously, operators are focusing more and more on, on the data side, and um, obviously they're still doing very successfully well with an SMS, but voice seems to be the, the, the forgotten um, um, area. Um, what you can see there to, to the right is um, what Juniper Research, what here we're predicting to happen to um, uh, voice revenues. Um, it's quite a significant uh, decline of, of 40 billion over the next um, uh, four years. Um, and that's mainly down to the, the, the consumer habits um, of, of users, as, as it was just mentioned before. Um, when people are, are dealing with brands and enterprises, they're not necessarily looking uh, towards uh, using voices that the the, the prime uh, you know method of communication, um, and it's the same with fixed line telephony as well as as well as mobile telephony. Even with the improvements in in, in voice and uh, the, uh, the services and technologies that are being used now, um, we're looking at uh, areas where um, people are more uh, in you know more uh, comfortable using things like email messaging. Uh, even chatbots uh, rather than voice. And um, it, as I said, it's becoming sort of more and more um, uh, a, a forgotten technology. Um, and enterprises need to view this ever, ever so slightly differently. So um, what we saw in the SMS market, if you go back 15 years, you know, SMS uh, was monetized by the end user and now it's monetized by the enterprise, um, uh, to, sorry, through the enterprise rather than um, the, the, you know, the end user themselves. Um, and what we're, what we're seeing is more and more and more innovation for um, <clears throat> sorry um, from uh, you know the areas like omni-channel communication where more and more channels are being put in. Uh, COVID nineteen pandemic has, has forced a lot of companies who weren't previously uh, in line with the, you know the route of digitalization essentially being forced to accelerate how they go about doing it, and it's, it, it's uh, having an impact on what services are being used, especially voice. Um, and moving to uh, you know, the, moving on to the, the yeah, thank you. Um, what we're looking at here is is, is a, a good example of, of monetizing through the enterprises is, is the, the, the CPaaS market. Um, so what, what we want to um, have a look at is uh, what CPaaS players do, which is obviously uh, monetize many many different channels um, together um, rather than uh, looking at them separately. What we've got there when it comes to to, to voice is. Um, looking at uh, how voice can play a role alongside SMS and, and chatbots and messaging and, and push notifications. And um, it's something that we're, we're certainly um, uh, seeing more and more interest in, in, in with voice. Um, one of the, the areas that we're, we're seeing is even though, as it mentions there, the, the traditional call time is uh, becoming less and less, um, what that really is focusing on there is uh, essentially P2P voice traffic. People are calling each other less and less. People are spending less and less time on things like video calling or, um, uh, you know, apps such as FaceTime and Skype. But one of the areas that you know you want to be looking at, uh, which uh, players like uh, in the CPaaS market could could uh, move into, is, is things like moving away from P2P voice to A2P voice or flash calling. And uh, it's a very similar situation that the SMS market was in. Um, uh, a few years ago, um, well, a number of years ago now, where SMS, as I said, was monetized through the end, uh, through the uh, mobile subscriber, and then ATP came along and it was monetized through the uh, the enterprise because um, uh, enterprises, if we're honest, have to have deeper pockets and use the SMS as a, as a service was, was commoditized. Users weren't willing to pay for anything that were uh, that sorry was um, you know a premium or uh, was deemed as something that should be uh, given to them as part of their mobile contract. Voices um, move down a similar route now, and what we're seeing is more and more uh, companies that, that want to leverage the voice uh, service uh, or the voice channel over operator networks um, to, to do it. And um, as it mentioned there in the last last bullet point, we, we talk about um, the, the the movement towards LTE. So uh, one of the big key drivers that we've seen of, of many um, telecommunication services over the last few years has been this movement to a more IP based. Uh, network structure, um, LTE, uh, voice over LTE, voice over 5G. Um, because they're IP based, they're, uh, they're allowing more and more innovation to be completed over, over um, networks and, and voice channels. And, um, you know, as a, as a result, you're seeing these integration into models like the CPAS market or the C, CCAS uh, market, CCAS being communications, uh, no, sorry, uh, contact center as a service. Um, that means that can be further integrated. It means even more the, the enterprise can, can monetize the um, uh, the voice channels and the voice traffic that's that's been moving. 
Um, if we quickly move on to the next slide, uh, and looking at the, the, the key mobile voice channels, I'll be very, very brief with this because we're uh, talking about how these, these, these are IP based and we're talking about how Vaulty and, and uh, voice, over, um, five, uh, voice over 5G can, can uh, impact and innovate uh, new voice services. Um, so if you look to the graph to the right, what you're looking at is globally, um, over 70% of networks are going to be on uh, 4G or LTE or 5G, these heavily IP based uh, technologies which means that um, in more developed areas where it's essentially going to be close to 100%, you're going to see these enterprises who are CCAS and CPAS vendors, uh, sorry, who use enterpri uh, enterprises who use CPAS and CCAS vendors being more comfortable using voice because it's IP based and it's a ability to you know, integrate it into the omni-channel solution. Um, uh, and on top of that, uh, obviously we need to mention that the voice over 5G and voice, voice over LTE provides you know, much better user experience for um, uh, many people. Um, uh, so looking at briefly, you know, 5G was briefly rolled out on um, uh, non-standalone architectures or, or essentially using LTE networks. Because they're both IP based, it was very easy to, to, to move forward. And uh, as we move to standalone networks, we're going to see, you know, as I said, more and more services that can firstly uh, be rolled out very quickly, but also be standardized across different regions and different geographies. Um, and that, as we said, 2G, as 2G, 2G and 3G shut down, um, we're, we're looking to um, move that acceleration to IP-based networks. Um, yeah, looking at, looking at Vaulty and what it means, um, uh, at present 5G is, is, is relatively, uh, well, not relatively, uh, it, it, there are less 5G subscribers than there are 4G subscribers, but 5G is obviously newer. Um, but one encouraging sign that the market's seen over the last couple of years is how quickly 5G has rolled out and how many users are now using not just Vaulty, but will be using voice over 5G in the, in the, in the future. Um, you know, uh, over 50% of the mobile subscribers globally are, are, are using it today, um, which means that these services that uh, you know, use like CPaaS, CCAS, omnichannel communications are um, very much um, uh, something that, you know, platforms like Vox can, can leverage to uh, not often brand new services now, but uh, innovate in, in the future uh, in, in launch new products very, very quickly. Um, if we move on to the, the, the next slide um, and looking at 5G, which again provides even uh, more benefits, it's a you know, much more highly virtualized network environment, which means that uh, operators, uh, sorry, enterprises can, can leverage uh, networks that provide um, almost seamless experiences over voice. Um, uh, you know, things like uh, a good example is uh, the, the the growth of programmable voice or the ability to essentially, you know, integrate APIs into voice, uh, you know, more and more voice services. Overall, this is going to create a more um, a seamless experience for, uh, you know, users who are uh, maybe not familiar with voice. Because one of the, the key areas that we were talking about earlier was the uh, how users need to... Uh, with especially with new, newer, gen, younger generations, foster the confidence in the voice channel. Um, many people have grown up, you know, using uh, SMS or, or messaging uh, before uh, voice itself, and you know, we need to foster confidence within uh, those generations in, in how a, a voice channel uh, will grow. Um, so, you know, as I said, securing a return on investment for operators is is, is, is an important thing. Um, and, you know, monetizing through the enterprises is, is a, a key area that we, we, we expect them to be working on you know, in, in the future with the IP based networks. Um, and that becomes important because when we uh, it seems to be an argument, again, comparing it to SMS a, a number of years ago, the competition with, with OTT apps and messaging apps that offer voice services is something that um, you know, operators obviously lost out their lost out their P2P traffic to the uh, to the OTT app some time ago now, and it's really a case of not wanting to to go and do that verse, uh, with um, uh, their their uh, P2P voice and their A2P voice because um, again, this is a, a strong channel that the operators could can, can um, uh, monetize in the future to uh, uh, you know secure a return on investment, you know, help with their you know significant investments into to 5G networks and standalone 5G networks. Um, if we move on to the the, the next slide. Um, and just have a quick look at the, these technologies. Um, as mentioned, obviously these OTT solutions, they, um, uh, they've moved away now from, uh, you go back a number of years, WhatsApp used to have a very small uh, a, a fee for their users. They've obviously abolished that a number of years ago, and now they're moving towards 
um, A to P revenue rather than P to P revenues, highlighting how uh, these voice channels or, or any channel from an operator itself actually needs to uh, move towards uh, and monetizing through an enterprise. Um, uh, and there are more technologies. We talked about IP-based networks before. The the, the ability for, for for voice assistants to um, uh, be you know enabled chatbots is a, a great idea. Uh, sorry, a, a great market that that's being or service that's being integrated into you know more and more uh, voice channels. Uh, as well as uh, you know, areas like programmable voice, uh, interactive calling is also a, another area that um, is you know is leveraging things like even artificial intelligence, which seems to be making its way into as many different areas of technology as possible these days. Um, that uh, can can be used for um, uh, you know enterprises that are looking into like the areas like CCAS and, and areas uh, such as uh, interactive calling, intelligent call routing, and things like that. Um, if we move on to the, the next slide, um, uh, what we're looking here is essentially the, the, the crux of it, which is the, the, the monetizable uh, elements of uh, uh, voice services. So we've mentioned very briefly the, the, the CCAS market and um, what that means for uh, uh, operators and how to, how to monetize it. Obviously, we're looking at things like flash calling, which could take over um, the uh the otps and two uh, two factor authentication sms messages that operators are so reliant on moving uh forward if operators are starting to lose that then uh to, to flash calling which is uh you know that present might not be monetized or monetized fully then you know they're looking at a, a, a noticeable decline in, in in revenue for um from messaging and uh yeah, it's, as we were talk, talking about AI and machine learning being, um, you know, as, as, as important as possible to, to um, looking at it, because voice firewalls, uh, such as the ones provided by Vox, are the, the ones that uh, are able to identify not just the traffic that they may be losing out money now, but using uh, machine learning and, and uh, to identify what areas of traffic are, are essentially being lost um, already. And then uh, as voice grows and they want to be monetized, it, cleaning the channel and making sure it's as, as efficient as possible is, is uh, the most efficient way to uh, secure a return on investment into into, into the voice channel it, um, itself. Um, and if we uh, move on, thank you. Um, sir. I'll move, I'll hand you back over to, to Theodore, who will take you through um, uh, Vox's solutions in more in more detail. I appreciate that, Sam. Thanks, um, and thanks for painting the picture on how the voice market is is is. Um, evolving not only in terms of trends but also in terms of what can be capitalized so as sam said i think there's four areas four main areas that are coming out um onto what represents segments within voice or traditional voice that can be leveraged in order to turn voice into a growing revenue stream for operators around the world specifically uh, i am seeing slides in front of me I, i'm not sure everyone else is seeing them so um, specifically, as Sam said, there are four segments that we believe uh, require the attention or uh, to which operators around the world can turn their heads into capitalizing them in the next period of time. Um, first, I'm going to talk about fraud, as, as Sam has said. So it's no surprise probably to everyone in the room, right? The voice is a huge market. It was, it is, and it will continue to be in that sense, large enough for fraudsters to be active. And while voice is decreasing, right, the international voice market has, is under pressure and is decreasing. Fraud is increasing double digit in terms of um, absolute number year on year, right? So it actually is an incremental pressure that is being put on the voice uh, segment, but also something that if addressed can lead to double digit growth for any operator out there. And solving it is not only important, but it also, if done properly, can represent the backbone to also leveraging other growth segments within voice. And these are the ones that we have here. So another one to address is, is as Sam said, the emergence of flash calling traffic. Um, I believe most of you here are probably familiar with what that is, um, flash calling or A2P voice traffic. I'm not gonna go into it in detail. Uh, now we have some slides uh, covering that later on, but it's basically an alternative to 2FA, right? Over A2P SMS and authenticating users via OTT missed calls like WhatsApp, Telegram, um, Viber, et cetera, et cetera. And it can, it can really represent either an opportunity or a threat, right? Um, I'll go a bit more in detail on, on why that claim um, how or how that claim stands. But first of all, if um, we're looking at it as, as, as a threat that basically is happening because 
it's it's mostly miscalls, right? So unless operators have the right technology stack in order to identify what kind of traffic flash calling traffic specifically is, it just goes unnoticed, right? And uh, hence it goes unbuilt. So the, actually the operator is the only party to lose here. Um, alternatively, flash calls can be blocked with the right technology or they can be monetized. And um, technologies such as ours um, help MNOs turn A2P voice or flash calling into an official end-to-end -end channel. Um, and as Sam said, I mean, within the A2P segment, we still have programmable voice and CCAS services. Um, I'm not going to go into detail on them here. However, what's important in both of them and, and is at the core of being able to leverage them is the ability to identify such traffic within, within the network. So going on, I'll first address the issue of fraud. Um, I'm not going to talk a lot about it. I think the study I'm showing is quite self-explanatory. Uh, and here we're sharing a study done by the CFCA recently, and it's done from two to two years. And it talks about how the evolution of different types of fraud um, happens with, within the voice industry. Here we're comparing basically 2019 to 2021, and the study, or what we have here on the screen, is, is looking at three types of fraud. So international revenue share fraud, arbitrage, interconnect bypass. Um, not going to read every figure on the slide, but... What's important here is to look at two different factors. So first of all, if we look at them in terms of magnitude, these are only three types of fraud. And if you accumulate them, they add to 13 billion loss um, per annum. And these are only three types of fraud, right? There's many others out there in the market. But not only looking at the magnitude is important, but actually looking at the growth of that because voice declines a couple of um, percentage points year on year, right? It depends on the market or, or it's stable. It, it depends on the geography. But international revenue share fraud is increasing 15% year on year. So in a market where there's pressure, it really, it really is a pain point. The question really is, um, I mean, first of all, why it happens, but also what can we do to in order to fully address it? Because uh, fraud has been around in voice for quite some time. Um, but even if that is the case, we actually see it increasing to a higher that degree that the voice market does. So something might be wrong. Now, um, if we ask ourselves why that is, I think the explanation comes from two different factors. First of all, Sam uh, used to have a saying, he didn't use it today, but he used to say, fraud goes where the money flows. And that's correct. Uh, and the voice industry is around 200 billion US dollars in size. So that gives fraudsters a lot of space and it is very tempting, right, as, a, as an industry. The second thing is access to technology. So the operations of any fraudster probably are focused around technology. In the past decades, technology and the cost of accessing technology and access to technology have all been improved, right? So the setup costs or probably the financial business case for any kind of operation like this is actually getting more profitable day by day um, as fraudsters are let's say, innovating in, in the market. And the second reason for that is voice is one of the more mature, most mature segments out there. And within such cases, you usually see legacy technology or legacy modules being used or firewalls that uh, are not up to date to the last, let's say, tricks that uh, fraudsters are doing. Um, some departments oversee it, but... I think it's safe to say that it's very profitable for everyone to turn their eyes. And not only it's not only financial gain, but it's also customer experience, right? And, and churn reduction into making sure that fraud is mitigated in voice. Going a bit into discussion on the last point that I've mentioned, which is technology. I'm also going to share here um, information from the same CFCA study, which basically talks about, or it's a sample asking how many of the operators out there use two different types of technology and supporting uh, and eliminating voice fraud, which is basically one is CDR analysis. The second one is signal record monitoring or SRM, how some of you might know it. So uh, very briefly, CDR analysis is more or less the backbone in, in eliminating voice fraud. And it's done by uh, call detail records, which are basically analyzed after the call has been terminated, right? So from my explanation, you can already understand it's a reactive approach, right? I mean, if the CDRs are done after the call is terminated, how can you treat fraud in real time? You can just maybe use blacklist source and whatnot, but you can't um, mitigate the full illicit attempts of any fraudster out there. Um, on the other hand side, signal record monitoring 
examine calls from the beginning so you can actually use it to fight fraud from the moment that a call is initiated. Um, in terms of numbers, so if we look here, we basically see that um, a third of operators out there are using SRM. 40% don't use it and the rest of, well, a quarter of the market doesn't know. So, I mean, mostly if you don't know, you're, you're not really using it probably. So let's say that as in a realistic or optimistic scenario, around 40% of the market is, is, is using SRM. But this shows the kind of shift that one must do in order to fully leverage voice. Um, and while having fraud present is bad news, solving it and having double digit growth right in voice, which is otherwise not the high growth segment is good news. So I assume with any bad news, there is, there is some positives, right? Um, lastly, I'm going to talk about flash calls or A2P voice. Um, and high level, they are you know, alternative to FA method, right? In order to authenticate mobile users via OTT missed call, like WhatsApp, Telegram, Viber, etc. cetera. Um, and they've emerged recently, but actually are, um, let's say, sought to be probably one of the traffic segments of the highest growth within the next years. Uh, Sam's team actually has done a great white paper on it. I think it was the first to come out at that point in time, and it certainly enlightened a lot of people in the industry to that end. Um, and actually what they see is, and based on their estimates, we see that um, in 2026, there's probably going to be 130 billion flash calls globally. Um, not only looking at it in terms of magnitude, but the, the same estimate basically shows that this kind of traffic volume doubles year on year, right? I mean, if traditional voice increases, let's say 5% or 4% year on year, uh, A2P voice traffic or flash calling traffic is bound to double, right? making it a segment of very high growth. Um, the high growth can either turn it into a threat or it can turn it into an opportunity. It really depends on how you address it and if you have the right technology in order to, to leverage that. Why is flash calling um, a segment to increase? I mean, it's, it's bound or in, in free factor. So first, it's cheaper than A2P SMS at this point in time. Uh, obviously, that happens as some operators can't identify it and hence it's not really bills. So it's, there, there's no termination cost at this point in time without block, having it blocked or having it turned into an official channel. The second is um, it's quite user friendly, right? So uh, here you have the OTP embedded within the A number. So the authentication happens in the background. It's frictionless. You don't really have to copy paste any code anywhere. And the third thing is it has no content. So unlike A to P SMS, it cannot be manipulated, right? Um, so you can't use it for any marketing or promotional aspects in that sense, but for players such as fintechs or financial institutions, it can be appealing and they might be willing to pay a premium for certain verticals, right? Because it's just safer than A2P SMS. In the same time, as said, it's, it's quite user friendly. So all in all, uh, this is how Flash is going to evolve. Now, the question is, what are, are we going to do about it as an industry and what are operators doing about it? It's, an alternative technology, such technologies um, emerge from time to time, right? Um, from multiple reasons. One can be the A to P SMS price, which also sometimes it's it's increasing around the world. Um, but actually, operators have, from what we've seen, three strategies that that one can employ. The first one is doing nothing, obvious one. Uh, but usually, what happens here is A to P voice is a direct uh, substitute to a to P SMS for 2FA, right? Um, so the direct effect is cannibalizing A to P SMS. Uh, studies show, and based also on, on Sam's team's estimate, that um, probably 25% of A to P SMS, if nothing is done, basically cannot be, can be threatened or cannibalized by, uh, by flash calling within the next uh, four years. And, and that's quite high, right? Um, but obviously, this is if nothing is, is, is been done. The second option is to block flash calls. So with the right technology, you, obviously, you have to identify them in real time and be able to block such traffic. And what happens is you protect your A2P SMS stream and volumes. And the benefit you have of that is being able to fully capitalize the organic growth that the A2P SMS segment has, right? It doesn't bring, really bring you any significant upside compared to what you currently generate in terms of A2P SMS revenues, but at least you're not losing anything and it helps you um, pr protect 
traffic from and then leverage the organic growth that A2P SMS volumes have. Now, the last option is monetizing flash calls. Um, and there are a few technologies out there to do so. My colleague Julian will talk more about it. But um, basically, in this, by doing this, first of all, you have to be able to identify it in real time. And then by doing that with very high accuracy, right, and, uh, and, and amazing detection rate, you have to be, you can turn A2P voice into a monetizable channel end-to-end, -end, right? And then you, you have the operator in charge of pricing and, and, and basically controlling, right, the, in a sense, the penetration of A2P voice because, as we know, with any service, that's highly linked to, to the price that it comes with. Um, it's similar or, I mean, for both uh, blocking it or monetizing it, you need the appropriate technology in order to do so. We're one of the companies that do it. Um, and the only ones out there to, to be able to help operators monetize flash calls and not only block them. And for that, you have to said you have to do it in real time. But I'll let my colleague Julian talk a bit more about it and, uh, and how our modules are, are packed and how they help operators, um, not only us, but also technologies out there. Thank you, Teodoro. So um, I have a little bit of time, uh, as I understand, so I'll try to make this quick. Uh, I have the role of bragging about it. So uh, very quick, uh, Vox today it's the uh, monetization leader in A2P voice flash call. Uh, we are a market leader in terms of monetizing the flash call. So we have the technology to control it, to give the mobile operator the control. Uh, in the same time, we, we are uh, uh, monetizing this, so we're not just blocking it like, uh, uh, let's say, other solutions are proposing to. Uh, going forward, so uh, we have an increasing number of, of operators uh, which they're implementing the, the flash call solution to address this growth of flash call. Uh, we have a li missing link there. I think that's an old presentation, but... Um, yesterday we had a PR with uh, Megaphone. Uh, they just launched uh, the solution with monetizing flash call. Uh, we have others, uh, other clients that uh, they uh, selected the strategy. As my colleague uh, uh, was saying, uh, we advise mobile operators not just to block, uh, to fight the technology, but to embrace it. Um, having uh, an official channel of uh, a, to v, a to P voice with a dedicated pricing strategy. Uh, it's, it's an interrelated channel, but it can have its own pricing strategy uh, as far as the uh, business, uh, the A to P business segment evolution. Uh, so uh, some of the uh, customers that they have uh, selected to go with uh, the monetization of the flash call, uh, except uh, Megaphone, we just did the press release yesterday, is uh, Ipco Kosovo. We have Beeline and we have as well Telecom Slovenia uh, as recent examples. A little bit about our, this, uh, our solution. Um, we use uh, proprietary uh, AI analytic engine, a machine learning engine. Uh, it's a real-time solution. So also you'll see a lot of proprietary uh, in our description. Uh, it's because it's, we use our own code. So that makes us very quick to react to the uh, evolving uh, uh, threats in the market. So we have the database, the data mining engine, which we use. We have a firewall, uh, again, proprietary. Uh, we have a network audit team uh, with a monetization team with a support uh, and NOC, which runs 24 hours. Uh, we have a GUI, a business intelligence portal, where we present the situation. Um, and uh, overall, uh, the Vox360, it's a uh, unique omni-channel solution, which is dynamically updated uh, with managed services and also uh, tailored to any uh, client specification. Um, on top of it, of course, we provide uh, strategy consultancy services where uh, on both pricing strategy and, of course, uh, anti-fraud be uh, best practices. Uh, this is being accumulated over the experience we have uh, on the global uh, deployments so far. Well, that's it for me. Uh, we go to questions. Well, we, 
we haven't actually spoken to Essan, who created the company and who actually brought the whole area of ATP Voice Flash to MEF members' attention last October, Essan. So that was you. Do you want to introduce yourself quickly and just talk about it very, very quickly? Go for it. Hi, James. Thank you for being here. Thank you for everyone. Sam, thank you for very good presentation and being here with us and supporting us with all type of analysis and uh, insights uh, during all these years. Um, I mean, I think uh, I have some people starting to to uh, to call me a flash man or something like that. So it sounds funny, <laughs> but anyway, maybe because of uh, what you're saying and what you just mentioned, James, because I was maybe the first uh, person, first one that uh, used to bring this in the... Um, uh, to the awareness around this uh, and myth was a great platform helping us to do so to achieve that and now somehow i became maybe because of that uh flash man so <laughs> it's cool anyway you've got to be uh, careful the way you say that i have to admit why <laughs> <laughs> perhaps not in london that would work in america but not here <laughs> Good. So anyway, thank you for, uh, I mean, uh, my colleagues and uh, Sam uh, covered all the points. I have nothing to add. Uh, happy that to see more and more MNOs uh, starting to adopt uh, Flash solution. They realize, thanks also to all the efforts done by MEF, Juniper, and all the forums, uh, um, MNOs now, now they are much more educated. They, they understand much better the phenomena. And they started to act, and they see more and more MNOs uh, starting to implement Flash solution, uh, either monetize it, block it, whatever, different strategies. And we are happy that uh, we can uh, contribute in this um, and help them to monetize their assets and also keep the keep this new channel, I would say, Flash or A2P Voice, clean for enterprises to can um, run their business and their use cases. Similar yeah, that we do for SMS as well right now. Yeah, thank you very much. So going back to what Sam said, Sam talked about A to P voice, A to P voice flash being very much where SMS was some years ago, I would say about uh, 10, 10 years ago, really. And there's a huge opportunity there. There are challenges, but there are great opportunities. Any quick questions out there? We've got Vladimir from uh, Lank Telecom. Uh, yes. Hi, uh, Ehsan. Hi, uh, everyone. Uh, so first of all, congrats with the new, uh, your first, new, uh, first launch of this uh, A2P voice monetization. Uh, that's great. Uh, on the practical note, uh, because I come from, I mean, my, my background is voice. I understand how it works. Uh, in, 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 in the voice ecosystem, people do not know how to charge and build uh, uh, flash calls. So how, uh, on the practical no uh, point, how this does will it work? Like how the uh, operator will be actually able to build their customers for this flash calls? Uh, well, if Sam, you want to take this? Or... <laughs> very good question. Uh, very good question. I was expecting to, a good question come from, uh, from Lang. <laughs> good. So, I mean, I think you can imagine how it is done. Uh, it is per attempt. Many, we have the capability and we built a solution to have the capability to, to chart uh, per event or per attempt uh, the call. So once you identify the flash call, um, definitely it should come through, we, you, it should come through A2P channel. Similar to SMS, we define a new channel, uh, A2P voice. And all the calls or attempts or events or flash that coming are, are, are built per attempt, per event, how you want to call it. And um, basically, this is the capability that we offer to MNO. They don't need to do much. We just implement the solution. We build a trunk. And uh, we can help them to aggregate also um, the, the flash calls. And they are uh, they build per attempt. We build aggregators and enterprises and OTTs per per attempt. Already we have a couple of enterprises and OTTs that paying for for flash uh, calls per attempt. And uh, MNOs um, just monetize this way the the flash calls. 
Okay, so uh, uh, it means that it's going to be a completely separate channel. So in the stream of the voice traffic, if the traffic comes, let's say, to Megaphone Tajikistan, so th this call attempts should be blocked because it's, it's, it's not coming to the right channel. Is it, is it what you are saying? Correct. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So right now, we are the exclusive, uh, exclusive channel to collect this type of flash call traffic. So if... <laughs> P2P channels that right now many there is there is many interconnections that Megaphone has. If any flash come through P2P channel, it is, will be blocked. And it should be redirected through A2P channel, which we are present in the market. We have over 250 interconnections on voice. So anybody can we can reach to us and send the flash to, to us. So it's not a it's doable. Yeah, okay. Thank if you. I may, you know, just to complete a little bit, the, uh, because we get this question a lot, how this is playing out for mobile operators in terms of uh, uh, charging, basically, this uh, new authentication channel, it's creating a separate framework, and that goes from the contract, the SIP connection, right? So just like A to P SMS emerged, we only had like a few years ago one SMS, now we have P2P and A2P, and they, they need to have different frameworks, right? Um, you, could, you have two frameworks, contractually, billing, and of course, you need to have a solution because they will try to abuse you on the P2P where if they send, the cost is zero. So uh, in a nutshell, this is the logic. Thank so you. very, very similar to what can be done with A2P SMS. So we've got John Murta sitting over there from uh, Infobip. We had our business messaging event in June, and I feel as though this is Rocky too, because we had this exact discussion with, with Esan, we had Vladimir, and we had John back in June discussing this topic. And it's certainly involved so much and so fast in five months, and it will continue to do so. So thank you very much to Vox Solutions for sponsoring this. Sam, lovely seeing you, and thank you very much for joining from Juniper. And at Teodoro, a real pleasure meeting you for the first time. And Julian, thank you as well. Thank you. Thank you. And on to the next.